it's really not easy to make a gaming keyboard that really stands out these days, just because there's so much stuff out there already. But Rocket, maker of PC gaming peripherals, decided to give it a shot with the Vulcan 121 AMO. Let's check it out. In the box, we get a low profile removable palm rest, the Vulcan 121 mechanical gaming keyboard, some logo stickers, and a small setup guide. This is a full size, full layout mechanical gaming keyboard with some dedicated multimedia keys and controls just above the number keypad. And this version, the 121 AMO, comes with a black brushed aluminum top plate, but you can also get it in white and silver with the Vulcan 122 and 120. The whole thing's designed to be low profile, and it's really noticeable, especially if you look at it from the side. It's generally thicker at the back, but it tapers down quite a bit towards the front. The palm rest continues to taper forwards towards the user, and it's really easy to install and remove with a simple magnetic connection. I have to say the low profile design's actually pretty practical and comfortable to use. When I first unboxed it, I was a little bit skeptical when I saw how thin it was and kind of held it in my hands for the first time, but after using it for a while, it totally grew on me. In terms of build quality, unfortunately it seems like that aluminum top plate's really the main structural component and the base is just a thin feeling plastic. And this becomes obvious when you apply some pressure to the midsection of the top of the board where you can definitely see a moderate amount of bending. Keep in mind that's not really going to affect the gaming performance of the keyboard in any way because nobody really games by applying a bunch of force just to the midsection of the back of the keyboard. It's just a test that I like to do when I'm testing build quality when I'm reviewing keyboards. Just gives me an idea of how rigid the frame and the build is. On the bottom we've got one level of adjustment with the flip out feet and lots of soft rubber grippy material. The board doesn't seem to have any issues staying put on my desktop or on a giant cloth mouse pad. The most noticeable feature on the Vulcan 121 has to be the super slim keycaps and exposed key switches. This is what really makes this keyboard unique. Keycaps just feel like they're made of ABS plastic and they have a significantly reduced height compared to standard keycaps, but they still retain the same spacing and surface area. So even though they're super thin, you don't really notice it when you're using the keyboard. It just feels like a normal keyboard keycap underneath your fingertips. The slim keycap design has a few benefits. For example, they're really easy to remove, they make cleaning around the keycaps and around the faceplate of the keyboard really easy, and they leave the switches mostly exposed and visible, and it turns out that improves the look of the backlighting by quite a bit, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Now let's talk about the switches. This board uses Rocket's own Titan mechanical key switches, and the Vulcan 121's available with linear reds or tactile browns, and the version that I'm reviewing here today is equipped with the browns. The main idea with the Titan switches is that they're supposed to enable key presses to be read at an earlier point after actuation compared to competing keyboards. These browns have a 1.8 millimeter actuation point and 3.6 millimeter total travel distance compared to 2 millimeters and 4 millimeters on Cherry MX browns. Rocket says this results in a speed boost of up to 20%, but in practical use I wasn't really able to notice a difference. What I did notice though was that the tactile bump feels very pronounced and occurs really early in the keystroke. It kind of gives the keys a nice responsive feel. I'd say it feels a bit better than the MX brown tactile bump. When it comes to the sound, it's pretty much what you'd expect from a keyboard with tactile mechanical switches, but there is one annoying downside, and it's that I can hear a bit of a ringing sound after completing key presses. So while it may not make the nicest sounds, that doesn't hold back its performance in any way as a serious gaming keyboard. I've been using it for over a week now, every day, and I will say that it's a very nice and comfortable keyboard to use. The low profile ergonomics seem to suit my typing and gaming style, which I didn't really expect when I first took a look at the board. I liked playing FPS games with it, the keys were easy to find and press during fast paced gameplay, and overall, I'd say it's definitely a competitor in the premium gaming keyboard market as far as performance goes. All the configuration and customization for the keyboard is going to be done through Rocket Swarm software. In here we have 5 different memory profiles where we can save different settings, and a profile manager where we can give each one of those a name so that it's easy to keep track of what they're for. There's also a macro manager down here with some pre-programmed stuff in here that's game specific, so you can pick something from the list to kind of get you started if you're into custom macros. And then there's some other kind of stuff on this main page here that I don't really play around with too much. One of the weirdest things or most unusual things that I've seen in, in uh, keyboard software in a while is this right here, sound feedback. 
If you turn this on, you can change the sound that a key press makes that you'll hear through your headphones or through your speakers. Um, personally, I wouldn't want to do that, but uh, it's there if you want to take advantage of that. Key assignment allows us to reassign the default functions for each of the individual keys on the board. And we've got a menu over here with some pre-programmed stuff, just like we saw with the macros. And it's actually searchable. So you can just come over here and type something in. And if there's something there, it'll come up and it's easy to apply to whatever key that you're looking to change. And also, if you don't like looking at the keyboard this way, you can just click list view and it'll show you all the keys just like this here. Key illumination is where we can take advantage of all the crazy RGB lighting effects built into this keyboard. So we've got our usual drop down menu that you'd expect to see with any gaming keyboard software with some of those basic effects like breathing and wave and stuff like that, no big deal. But the big feature here with this keyboard is the AMO intelligent lighting system. So if we look down here, it'll tell us what that's supposed to do. And it says AMO is a state of the art intelligent lighting system that reacts organically to your behavior without the need for extensive configuration. So the idea is you enable AMO and that's it. Whatever game or application you're using on your system, the lighting should react and change accordingly. The Rocket Vulcan 121 has absolutely amazing lighting features and effects. The shortened keycaps let a ton of light from the switches shine through in a similar way to putting keycaps, but it's actually even brighter because there's nothing at all to block or diffuse the light. This is a really impressive way to do RGB lighting on a gaming keyboard. It seriously looks amazing. So if you want something that's gonna really stand out on your desk, this should be one of your top options for sure. Now this keyboard's been out on the market for a little while and I recently found it selling on Amazon for $120 on sale, marked down from $160. At $120, I think this is really a non-issue. Like I can totally recommend this. You're getting a really good gaming keyboard for $120. Um, you know, highly recommend it at that price. But if it's at $160, it may be a little bit harder to justify for some people because it does have a few downsides. Things like that kind of thin feeling plastic uh, bottom layer, the plastic base, no USB pass-through port, which is kind of a nice thing to have on a premium gaming keyboard, but that's missing here. And then you've got that ringing sound that comes from the key switches, unfortunately. So, you know, if you're looking at it and it's full price and you're kind of debating whether or not you should get it, I would say ask yourself these two questions to help decide. Number one, how much do you care about RGB backlighting? And number two, um, do you want something that looks like everything else out there? Or do you want something that's really unique and different? If you answered a lot and yes to those questions, then this is probably for you. And I think you'll probably be happy with it and it'll be you know well suited to what you're looking for. And also, I just want to take a second to give a shout out to Rocket for designing something that's refreshing and unique and different. You know, with all these keyboard and gaming mice releases, everything's kind of the same these days just because everything's been done. So it's really hard to innovate. So it's really nice to see something that's different and unique come out on the market. And I really hope we see more, more stuff like this in the future. So uh, yeah, thanks Rocket and keep it up. So I'm gonna put the purchasing links down in the description of this video for anyone that's interested. If you pick one up, leave us a comment and let us know what you think about it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any upcoming content. And we'll see ya.